Welcome to Electric Universe Eyes. Today I'm going to narrate a fantastic article I found that was written and published at sensualanimus.com about six years ago, and this is about crystals. Particularly what caught my mind was the part two of his uh, three-part article, and it's the electrical properties of crystals. I, being Electric Universe Eyes, like to look at everything dealing with the electric universe, so I thought I'd share this with you. So let's get started. Crystals act as transducers, transforming and transmuting energy from one form to another. Quartz crystals, in particular, behave as capacitors, storing energy in a form which can later be discharged. Some also function as multi-wave oscillators, capable of dealing with a wide range of frequencies. The Romans of Pliny's age, the age of Nero, valued quartz crystals immensely for their beauty and for their healing properties, which Roman physicians found to be enhanced when the crystals were exposed to sunlight. The sun. Are stars powered from within, or does the power come from elsewhere? This was the question asked by Sir Arthur Eddington in the 1920s. He settled for the former, and this laid the foundation for current mainstream models. Ralph Jurgens asked the question again in the 1970s and opted for the latter. According to Jurgens, stars shine because they are connected to electric circuitry within galaxies. An electric star's brightness thus depends on the power of the electric current feeding it, not on the amount of nuclear fuel available to burn. Stars thus behave as anodes in a galactic glow discharge. The many surface phenomena that can be seen on the sun hot corona, sunspots, prominences, flares, can all be explained by an electric sun, difficult to understand from a nuclear point of view. Nuclear reactions take place on the surface, not in the core, perhaps explaining why neutrino numbers vary with sunspot cycles, and these reactions are almost certainly produced in the same way that we produce them in the lab, by accelerating particles in an electric field. You can reference plasmacosmology.net. The known universe is made of 99% plasma, and plasma is an ionized, electrically charged gas. Stars, galaxies, nebula, and planets are all affected by electric currents in the plasma through which they move. Plasma cosmology says that the sun is not a nuclear furnace, but rather an electromagnetic plasma ball. The modern astrophysical concept that ascribes the sun's energy to the thermonuclear reactions deep in the solar interior is contradicted by nearly every observable aspect of the sun, says Ralph E. Jurgens, 1980. In Jurgens' electric sun model, our sun functions electrically, that it is a huge electrically charged, relatively quiescent sphere of ionized gas that supports an electric plasma arc discharge on its surface and is powered by subtle currents that move through the now well-known tenuous plasma that fills our galaxy. The electric universe model only developed recently because astrophysicists and electrical engineers didn't stray into each other's realms. This has changed. Welcome to the 21st century. Plasma cosmology is recognized by the prestigious IEEE, or the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers. It is based on the work of several Nobel Prize winners over the last century and has many successful predictions. A more detailed description of the electric universe and plasma cosmologies, as well as the deficiencies of the standard solar fusion model, are presented in the plasma work of Nobel laureate Hans Alphen, the books The Electric Sky by Donald E. Scott in 2006, and The Electric Universe by Wallace Thornhill. Quote, in a neon tube, for instance, you see a glow extending along the tube, but near the electrodes, or at the end of the tube, there are dark spaces. The glow is the kind of glow a star produces, and there are many red giant stars which produce light just like a neon light. The dark spaces in the neon tube are equivalent to what we have in interstellar and intergalactic space. In other words, current is still flowing there, but it's invisible when in, quote, dark mode. Stars are like a focus sitting in a discharge, and they light up in that discharge. The polarization allows you to map the magnetic field directions in space. Once you've done that, it's a given in plasma physics that electric currents will flow along the direction of the ambient magnetic field lines. So in other words, you can begin to trace the circuits in deep space. And we find the galaxies themselves arranged like Catherine wheels, that's the great spiral galaxies along intergalactic power lines, what are called Birkeland currents. 
They're like giant twisted pairs of electric currents which flow through space. In various places, if the density of matter or the gases and dust in space are sufficient, these pinch down. It's called a magnetic pinch or a Z pinch. And in pinching down, they scavenge the matter from their surrounding space and squeeze it, heat it, rotate it, and form the stars that we see. But they do that in a particular pattern which we can reproduce in the laboratory, and that pattern is the spiral galaxy. It's an organic picture of the universe. Picture. We're not isolated islands in space. Stars are not isolated. They're connected electrically and gravitationally. So it's a completely new way of looking at our place in the universe." End quote, Wall Thornhill. Alvin's long-time experimental plasma work laid the foundations for a new approach to galaxy formation. Galaxies are often dwarfed by the full extent of electromagnetic radiation in their surroundings, and the source of these energies must be taken into account. In the plasma universe, electric currents will intersect at critical points to drive an electric vortex, giving birth to spiral galaxies. The behavior of electricity in space is based on the laboratory observation of electric currents and electric discharge in plasma, together with supercomputer simulations of the way charged particles interact under the influence of electric currents. The solar wind is a highly electrically charged plasma wind that flows out towards the planets. Most connections are plasma filaments and, quote, winds that seem to act as variations of Birkeland currents, as seen here in this image. Atoms are electric, and plasma, which is charged gas, make up 99% of the material in the known universe, is also electric. Jurgen suggested that the sun is the focus of a galaxy-powered glow discharge. Crystals electrically charged by the sun which in turn is charged from the plasma sea of the galaxy. So now, are crystals made from electric currents? The recent discovery of giant crystals cave in the Nica mine of Chihuahua, Mexico has stunned scientists. The cave is filled with mineral deposits of enormous size, as well as with delicate flowers and wisps of crystal so fine that a breath will shatter them. The crystalline shapes are formed out of semiconductor materials, selenite, calcium carbonate, silicon dioxide, and lead sulfides. The crystal matrix shown above is an example of the spray that might have been created when a powerful electric current exploded out of the rock face into a void beneath the surface. The nuclei of charged particles could have been carried along with the current flow and either ionized by the passage of electricity or forced out of a solution within the solid medium. The filaments of energy flew out of a central point and then crossed empty air seeking the path of least resistance, whereupon they continued into the stone, impacting at multiple locations. Wherever the electric arcs passed, they left behind consolidated crystals condensed along their interior trackways. One significant aspect to Giant Crystal's cave is that it is bone dry with little evidence to imply that it was melted out of the rock by flowing water. Coupled with the lack of moisture, we find nothing in traditional scientific theory that explains how water causes the precipitation of 12 meter crystals along all orthogonal axes. Closing, the Shumash thought quartz crystals had supernatural power and believed that lightning bolts produced them. Thanks.